right, we're going to move on to lesson 4.2 on properties of isosceles triangles. So the two conjectures that we discovered in class, the first one was the isosceles triangle conjecture, which says if a triangle is isosceles, then its base angles are congruent. So the base angles, again, to remind you, that's really funny. The base angles, if you have an isosceles triangle, these two are the congruent sides, then the third side, the non-congruent side, is the base. So the two angles that come from the base are the base angles. So if we know it's isosceles because the measures of two sides are congruent, then we know that the base angles are also congruent to each other. Then the converse is, if a triangle has two congruent angles, then it is an isosceles triangle. A number of you wrote on your paper that if a triangle has two congruent angles, then it also has two congruent sides. Yes, that's true, but what are those two sides? And that's, again, simplified even further just to say that it's an isosceles triangle. So that's the proper uh, wording that we were looking at. If I, have an if I have a triangle and I know that two angles are congruent, that means the opposite sides are congruent, so it is an isosceles triangle. Let's take a look at how we're going to use this in our sample problems. Again, pause when necessary so that you may copy down the example in order to follow along with the work that I'm going to do. And I apologize for the uh, writing being a little bit hard to see. Using the blackboard app, I'm hoping to make this somewhat easier to see. I'm not sure how the blue's going to work out, but let's try it. All right, so we want to find the measure of angle H. And I can tell by looking at the picture that this is an isosceles triangle because the two measurements tell me. So if it's an isosceles triangle, well, HO is the base, so it means these are the two angles. And I know that the two base angles are congruent. So using the triangle sum theory, I can subtract 22 degrees from 180, and that will give me 158, then divide that by 2, because I have two angles to share that, and since those two angles are congruent, not get hasty there. So 150 divided by 2 is 75. And then you have the A, so 79 degrees for each angle. So that means the measure of angle H is equal to 79 degrees. All right, now take a look at our second example. We want to know what's the measure of angle OLE. Ole. So that is this angle here. Remember that when you are trying to solve for an angle and it gives you the description, uh, follow that description. So OLE tells you going from point to point to point, angle L, or the L being the vertex, of course. So we know automatically that this is going to be using the linear pair because we're trying to find an angle that's outside the triangle. Noticing our markings that we know SO and LO are our um, two congruent sides. That means SL is the base, so angle S, and angle OLS are the two congruent angles. So let's use that same idea again of 180 degrees minus 35. So 180 minus 35 is 145. Divide that by 2 when we get 72.5 degrees. Now that's angle SLO, that's 72.5. So in order to find angle OLE, we need to subtract that from 180 degrees. So 180 minus 72.5 gives us 107.5 degrees. So using our isosceles uh, conjecture and using our triangle sum conjecture and using our linear pair conjecture, we're able to go through that process and solve the problem. So that's a couple of fairly easy examples. Let's take a look at a couple 
more. All right, so now we have a couple of things we want to find in order to help us out. Okay, so, I feel like I'm missing some information from the book. Let me just double check really quickly. Do, 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 do. Okay, doesn't tell us that anything is congruent, but using the triangle sum theorem, oops, let's get my marker, there we go, using the triangle sum theorem, I can figure out the measure of angle T, so 180 minus 78 and 24 gives us also 78 degrees, so that tells me this is my isosceles triangle, and these sides that are opposite those base angles are the ones that are congruent. So, 38.5 is equal to y plus 22.5. If they're congruent, that means their measures are equal. So then using algebra, subtract 22.5 from each side, and we are given 16 it is y. So the measure of angle T is 78 degrees, that was the first question. And then the second question wanted to know what was the perimeter. Well, uh, Y is equal to 16, so that side is 16, this side is 38.5. So let's add that all together. And we get 93 degrees, and the unit of measure is centimeters. So 93 degrees centimeters. 93 centimeters, I mean, not degrees. Make sure that you do put the proper labels on here. So angle measures are degrees, and uh, linear measures are whatever the unit of measure is. All right, let's move on to our last example. It tells us that the perimeter of MTV is 605 inches. So what's the length of MV, and what is the angle, the measure angle N? Well, if we know that the three sides equal 605, let's add the two sides we know and subtract it from 605 degrees. So 605 minus 285 plus 160. So typing that into our calculator, we could probably do it by hand, but where's the fun in that? It takes less time to type it. Unless you are like me and are typing the numbers. Ah, oh, there we go. As we expected, it is the same as one of the sides, and in this case, MV is equal to 160 inches. So the two congruent sides are here and here, which means angle X is congruent to angle, sorry, angle V is congruent to angle T. So that means this is X. So we don't have it. Any numbers given to us, we have variables in all three terms, so let's do some algebra. x plus x plus x plus 99 is equal to 180 degrees, the sum of the three angles. So 3x plus 99 equals 180. Subtract so 99 from each side, so 180 minus 99 is 81. So 3x is equal to 81, so then divide by 3 x is going to equal 27, so plug that back into, we want angle M, so that means 27 plus 99, and our final answer is 126 degrees. Alright, so again, you can see how much work we are having to show just to justify your answers. A common way to ask these questions would be to figure out the answer, but on a two-column format. So if you would have your statements here, or sorry, your work here, and then on the right-hand side, you would have the conjecture to justify why it is you're doing that. So be prepared to answer some of those questions in your homework or your quiz or your test. Now that's it for the examples. There weren't too many for this particular scenario. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in class. If not, have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday.